because you guys asked for it in today's video i'm going to be doing a post-processing tutorial from start to finish So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography in general, then this channel is for you. So you guys might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you can always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So in this video, I'm going to go through the entire process or my entire workflow of post-processing. And I thought it would be the perfect opportunity also to unbox this. I recently got this from Huyon. It's a Canvas 13-inch 2.5K. Now, full disclosure, Huyon did send me this unit for review because they saw a previous video that I already made about their 16-inch version. And one of my complaints was the fact that it lacked vibrance. So I'll just do a quick unboxing of this one before we proceed to the actual post-processing workflow, okay? So let's open this thing up and see what's inside. So again, this is a 13-inch version, but the nice thing about it, it's new screen actually that it's 2.5K, so it should be more vibrant and it should be brighter. So here's the tablet. And this time, it came already with the tablet stand. Um, the previous versions, you actually had to order it separately. Oh, it feels different. It feels thinner and lighter and better made, actually. Even the back looks a lot better. Okay, so let's put this here. And then, of course, you've got the tablet here. I'm oh, sorry, the stand. Okay, let's open it up. And then what else is in here? Okay, let's set this one up. All right. How do you open this there? And... Oh. Okay. I'll just lift it up, depending on how high you want it. There and there. Okay, let's put this one here. Okay, so what else is inside here? Well... Of course, you've got the stand for the pen. Let's put this here. Then you've got your pen. So basically the same as the other one. And then you've got another cloth and this should be the connectors. All right. So in the same way, the old with the older version, it still can connect two ways. This one is via HDMI and USB-C. So, uh, sorry, HDMI and USB-A. So two du dual USBs, this one connects to your computer, and this one connects to the power outlet, which, is, which should be somewhere here. And this one is basically the USB-C connector, and this one goes to the power outlet so in case that you have a newer computer that has full USB-C like my MacBook Pro it should work with just these two cables and you've got an extender for the USB okay so let me set this one up and then afterwards it go into the post-processing workflow so I have it all set up here and there are some things that I actually noticed when I was setting it up number one it didn't come with a power brick the other versions came with a power brick, but that's not an issue because I just used my phone charger, connected it via USB. This tablet or this pen was also a little bit bigger and it has an option for a felt tip, which feels a lot better whenever you're scrolling through the screen. And another thing that actually surprised me is that when you press this long power button, it gives you now the option for color correction for this particular screen because it's a QLED screen now. I think it says, yeah, it's a QLED screen now. So you have options for the native color, sRGB or Adobe RGB. And for me, I edit everything in Adobe RGB, so I want to keep it at, in that color space. 
and at the same time you can finally adjust the brightness now which I can manually or visually calibrate to my to my screen so that more or less I know how it looks like but this right now is not my final working angle and I have my video lights here so I'll probably do this once I've set it up in the table there or in another desk okay so as I said in the intro of this video, we will be doing a post-processing tutorial from start to finish. And here is how it goes. Let me take out my glasses so that I can actually see. I start off everything with Camera Raw, of course. And the software that I chose today was just Adobe Camera Raw from Bridge. So right now I can see my image. It's slightly underexposed. So I'll just expose it. Oh, by the way, this one worked exactly the way my previous one worked. All I needed to do was download this Huion tablet from the website or Huion application or driver, sorry, from the website. And from this um, driver, you could actually do your calibration, monitor calibration in terms of, well, the pan like that. And then at the same time, you could set hotkeys to all these buttons here, which is gonna be very practical whenever you're working with a tablet or when you're whenever you're working with Photoshop. Okay, right now, so I'll just a bit, adjust a bit of my exposure and then maybe bring out some blacks. My white balance, I actually like the way it is already because I set it straight out of camera and I can see from both monitors that I actually okay. So from here, I'll just open it up in Photoshop, okay? So again, um, I, you know, it kind of became a combination of an editing video and a product review. But personally, I do like the product. I like the size. Um, how I wish, though, I had the 16-inch. Maybe I'm asking Huion, maybe you could send the 16-inch or the 24-inch. That would be fantastic because this 13-inch right now is already fantastic. What more the bigger ones, the 16 or the 24-inch, okay? So now that the image is opened up in Photoshop, the first thing that I do is press F in my keyboard to do a full screen mode. Right now, while well, all these keys are probably set eventually, but right now I still have to use my keyboard shortcuts. And what I like doing is really just enlarging, more or less seeing all the proper, all the things that I need to do when, when it comes to this particular image. So I'll make a new layer first, just for the purpose of showing you guys what I see. Here's an issue, here's an issue there. Overall skin smoothening, I might have a problem. This area here, I will have to clean up a bit this area here I will clean up also. So it's very, very simple actually. So I did delete that layer. All I have to do is start off with this one. I'll make it larger so that it's easier for me to work on. Space bar again to move the images around. I'll take this one, which is what's called the patch tool. I will just take it like this and pull it down. And that's a beautiful thing about using pen displays like this because it's so precise as if you were just drawing. So again, we'll do that here. And with the same, the patch tool, I can now basically just remove all the blemishes that weren't really covered with makeup. I'm sorry, babe. I know you hate the fact that I am editing your photo and showing everyone a before and after, but Honestly, you have beautiful skin anyway. And then spacebar, basically all I'm doing is using the patch tool. There. And then from there, I can already see more or less, if you zoom out, that we've gotten pretty good. Uh, we've gotten most of the imperfections out of the skin. Now, not a lot of people actually have great skin the way Coco does. So there are times that you might have to do a bit of skin smoothening. The nice thing about this new version of Photoshop now is that they have built-in skin smoothening called neural filters, which is basically what I'm showing you now. With neural filters, all you have to do is just press skin smoothening. And I usually leave it to what it's set as. You can see it here. It's actually a little bit too much, but I'll press OK. And then from there, I can just lower down the opacity to how I really want it for me, about 25% or 24% is fine. Then I'll create a layer mask just by pressing it here and getting now my brush tool and making sure that it's black so that I can now mask out or bring back in the underlying layer that for me needs to be sharper, like in this areas here, just to make sure that all the things that I want sharp is actually sharp. So 
this one you won't be able to see anyway so there that is the smooth end image not by much really but it does help okay so from there i'll merge this one normally you, it's better for you to work with layers but for me with the file sizes that i'm working with especially with this a7r mark IV cameras are really big and heavy on the computer i tend to merge my layers already just take my patch tool again easy bring it down there works then maybe remove this one too here and there now we have some loose strands here if i want to be oc about things yes i can just remove it using this one there that should do it again beautiful thing about pen displays is that it's so easy to do that what is this tool again you know i know these tools but i keep forgetting the names this is a spot healing brush tool so with a spot healing brush tool i can do this there just a little bit of cleanup so go through the face again see if there are things that i still need to remove like for example here there we go spot healing brush actually there's a hair here that i should actually remove here we go again pen displays beautiful and i really like the feel of this new tip it uh, it feels more organic there there we go then maybe remove this too here perfect now all these strands of hair here i normally don't remove anymore i like keeping my images imperfect um, because in the imperfection you will actually find perfection and then finally once i'm done with that i have my sharpening here which is basically just contrast sharpening and what it does is that it just makes everything well you'll see the difference look right now it's masked so i get my brush tool again make sure this time it's in white and brush it in see i made a mistake here could fix that too eventually there so i just make the lips the eyes the eyebrows sharp and the rest of the image basically still in the, with its original state just so that it's a clothes the eyes and the hair that actually pops from the image there so that's basically how easy my post-processing workflow is from start to finish well the secret really is getting the shot right in camera now, once you've done that, all you need to do is do a little bit of tweaking. Then afterwards, maybe just a little bit of cleaning up, which act these things like this pen displays really help a lot. That's why I actually have a 16 inch version there in the back for my bigger screen. This one will serve as my portable version, but I am actually loving the way the screen is. This one is very different from that old one, the 16 inch 2021. Um, I'll probably consider actually if I want to get a 16 inch or a 24 inch of this one, the 4K or the 2.5K, because as you saw, it's really very easy. I, it's so precise. It's so, well, I don't know. Well, for me, I've just been used to using pens like this or maybe at least pen tablets. However, if you guys aren't familiar with that, you could always use your mouse and do the same thing that I just did. Now, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And again, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images, you can always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.